Halloween's origins date back to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain, pronounced Sao In. The Celts, who lived 2,000 years ago, mostly in the area that is now Ireland, the United Kingdom and Northern France, celebrated their new year on November the 1st. This day marked the end of summer, and the harvest and the beginning of the dark, cold winter. A time of year that was often associated with human death. The Celts believed that on the night before the new year, the boundary between the worlds of the living and the dead became blurred. On the night of October 31st, they celebrated Samhain, when it was believed that the ghost of the dead returned to Earth. Hi guys, thank you for joining me. We're back out again tonight. It's Halloween, so happy Halloween to each and every one of you watching this video. I'm really sorry that I've left it too late. I'm not sure how well this is showing up in the background, but there's maybe only one or two hours left of light. But don't be discouraged that I've not headed out to any kind of creepy castle or boffy or something like that. Here at the 401 Files, we do creepy 365 days a year. So I'm just going to head out to the local spot tonight, light a fire, get a pumpkin lit, put up the tent because I've got Tallulah with me. And temperatures tonight, by the look of it, are going to be dropping well below zero. So it's going to be a cold night, but it should be interesting. Come with me, we're going to eat some good food, have a coffee and just kick back. I'll catch up with you soon. thinking about getting there and trying to get this tent set up before nightfall there's nothing worse than setting up a tent in the dark and not because it's creepy or scary but just a bit of a ball ache if anything I'm just pulling up into camp now, um, just walked through this little boggy area and I laid this piece of wood the last time I was here um, just to stop my feet getting wet crossing that puddle. Last thing you want is wet feet before you turn up into camp. Hopefully you can hear me okay on this footage and hopefully everything looks crisp and clean. This is off the new iPhone 11 so I'm just trialing this really, um, see how this goes. I met him 15 years ago, I, I was told there was nothing left, no reason, no uh conscience no understanding and even the most rudimentary sense of life or death of good or evil right or wrong i met this six-year-old child with this blank pale emotionless face and the blackest eyes the devil's eyes the devil's eyes Just a little bit of advice for 
anybody thinking of heading out this winter and um, getting some camping done during these colder months just don't rush things because things take twice as long when it's winter and um, I know it's easy to get disheartened or frustrated there's a lot of people out there like myself that are impatient and just want to see a fire made now or the tent thrown up in two minutes doesn't always work like that guys not in winter like I said everything takes twice as long so just be patient don't rush because if you do that's when accidents happen and that's when things start to go wrong okay so calm yourself down I know what you're all thinking and I don't blame you Ben's looking incredibly hot in his new hat <laughs> actually it's not my new hat it's Carrie's new hat but looks pretty cool and temperatures are going to be dropping really low tonight so I thought I'd bring it along with me the only problem is is when you have the ears down you can't hear anything around you and um, I don't like that in the forest when I'm on my own in the dark on Halloween night so I've pinned the ears up with this nice little clip and now I can hear everything and stay snug Um, there's Tallulah, she's come along with me again tonight for this trip. Um, just a little bit of a word of warning. If anybody does take their dog along with them camping, you can easily fall into the trap of feeding them things that we normally eat. So this is something I've recently discovered with Tallulah. I've been feeding her pork pies and biscuits and all sorts of crap. And now she's just become a little bugger because she'll just not eat her dog food. Um, she's quite high maintenance now and she'll want the steak or she'll want the Sunday dinner or something like that so Very naughty, naughty doggy, naughty doggy aren't we? Oh we are, we're a naughty doggy Cheers guys. You really have to be um, aware of your surroundings whenever you're wild camping on your own. Shapes and shadows, sounds can all be misinterpreted really easy. For example, where I'm camping now, there's like a river that runs around the campsite. But if you sit back for a little while and you just listen to that sound of running water continually, eventually it starts to morph into what sounds like people talking. And so I've been stopping and listening out, thinking there's people nearby, and all of a sudden the supposed chatting or talking of people will morph back into the sound of running water. So just be aware of where you are and conscious of the sounds and shapes, shadows, everything else that's around you. Cool little thing about my chair that I made. It's got a little drinks holder. I didn't actually intend for it to be a drinks holder. I've just found this out now, but it's still really cool. Considering I brought a flask tonight. Just sits my mug there perfectly, so. So it wouldn't be Halloween without sharing a few ghost stories, or one in particular, around a campfire. The one that I'm going to share with you happened to me when I was roughly about four or five years old. I know it's the old cliche that everybody was brought up in a haunted house or know somebody who was, but I generally was, and this house was very active with poltergeist activity. Not just myself, but other family members as well. Also visitors to the house had experiences of their own and my mum was in the house it was just me and my mum my brother and sister who were both older than me were at school 
I remember my mum asking if I was going to go upstairs to play with my toys because she wanted to jump in the bath. She wanted to get a quick bath before my brother and sister came barging through the door and um, she had to start tea. So she asked me for what I was going to do. Was I going to stay downstairs and watch TV for a bit longer? Or did I want to go upstairs and play with my toys? And I decided that I was going to stay downstairs. After about 10-15 minutes of watching TV, I decided that I was actually going to go upstairs. So I jumped off the sofa and I knelt down in front of the TV. The TV was one of the old style 80s TVs where you press the standby button and the screen doesn't instant, instantly go black. It actually just fizzles out with black and white noise. These little speckles would appear on the screen until eventually they fade. So I pressed the standby button and I watched the black and white speckles come onto the screen and slowly start fading out. All but one. One very large white speckle still remained on the screen. So I'm kneeling down on the carpet in front of the TV looking into the reflection at this one white object stood roughly behind me over my left shoulder at the living room door. The only way I can describe what I was looking at in the reflection is a heat wave. On a hot day when you look across the tarmac and you see the shimmering of the heat, it was kind of like that but vertically. Rather than horizontal, this thing was stood vertically and it had the shape of a head and shoulders. Not sure what I was looking at, just knew, knowing that something was not quite right, I decided to jump up and walk backwards. I didn't take my eyes off the TV, I constantly kept looking at this thing in the reflection, not yet brave enough to actually look directly at it. So now I'm sat on the sofa and I'm still watching this object, thinking for a brief period of time that it might just be some car lights outside. Obviously, that didn't last long as I realised it was daytime, nobody should have car lights on. Then something started to happen. This object that I'm watching in the TV then started to shake more violently or shimmer more violently. What was this became this. And it became really distorted. Um, it also looked like it was growing in size. It wasn't actually growing, looking back, what was happening is this thing was coming closer. It came so close to where I was sat on the sofa that I started to see it in my peripheral vision. I quickly snapped my head to look at this object and it glided right across the floor straight to where I was sat within about a few inches of my face. I can't tell you exactly how scared I was but I can tell you that I've never been that scared until this day. I jumped up off the back of the sofa, I scrambled up, kicking all the sofa cushions off on the floor and pulling the back of the sofa cushions down. And I then jumped off the side of the sofa and ran to the living room door where this thing had just been stood. I ran up the stairs and I ran to the bathroom where my mum was and I couldn't speak. This is the weirdest thing for me, is that when I tried to shout, when I tried to scream, nothing came out. Um, and that also added to the panic as well. What that thing was to this day, I'm still not sure. I've never seen anything like it before or since. And it just was otherworldly. I don't know what it was. Was it a spirit? Was it an extraterrestrial? I don't have a clue. And I'm not going to speculate. All I know is that this thing glided across the carpet to within about a few inches of my face and had the distinct shape of a head, shoulders and maybe some feet and it was bright white glowing and shimmering like a heat wave very very frightening um, and i wish to never experience anything like that ever again right guys i'm just about ready now to hit the hair um tallulah's been down for like the last hour bless her she's freezing and um she wants to desperately get in my sleeping bag so I'm not going to keep her waiting much longer, I'm just going to give her a bit of food before I head in there and then um, I'm going to settle down for the night. If there is any noises or anything untoward during the night, any banging on the tent, etc, 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 then I will pick up the camera and start recording. I'm hoping for a quiet night. Um, you guys know my channel, I'm not into faking anything. Um, to me, sometimes, the more scary things that happen are the ones that are actually true. People don't have to fake things to make something scary. I hope you've all had a great Halloween and you've all picked up lots of candy and sweets or whatever you call it wherever you are in the world and you've had a great night. I'll pick back up with you guys tomorrow, hopefully at first light and um, I'll start heading out of here. This was only a short video but it's really nice to be able to get one out for the Halloween period.
Have a safe night, look after yourselves, and I'll see you tomorrow. Here's a little tip for anybody that can't sleep without a pillow like me. Just bring yourself um, an empty pillowcase, and I'll just show you what we do with that now. Okay, so you can see there I've just pulled the pillowcase over the um, airbed, and I've just tucked underneath a jacket or a pillow or something like that. And uh, there you go, you've got a pillow that won't move all night, it's not going to slip off and you'll be able to get a good night's sleep. Tallulah's sulking because she can't find somewhere to get comfy and um, yeah, I'm going to snug her in the sleeping bag with me and try and steal some of her heat. Oh, I am sorry, I am sorry baby. But it's cold tonight so she needs to be in the sleeping bag or on my room at least. As you can see, we're now implementing code red, which means a full battening down of the hatches. The ears are down and in full swing, ladies and gentlemen. It's quite handy that you get this little clip as well because you can pull that in tight and everything just comes snug around your head. Viewer's discretion is advised. No animals were hurt in the making of this hat. Human's dignity, however, is another story. So I've just been thinking while I was live here about Tallulah and I was thinking what the hell does she think's going on? Like I drag her down to the woods, we pitch up this makeshift house, we climb in, we sleep for one night only, then we head back home the next day. What does she think that's all about? <laughs> uh, morning people time is quarter past seven in the morning um i didn't sleep too bad i survived the night it was cold um the only thing i found annoying was myself i kept fidgeting couldn't get comfy um i wasn't cold um to the point where i couldn't sleep or anything like that in fact i'm toasty now and i don't want to get out the biggest drama that I had was I needed to go for a pee and I just couldn't be bothered getting out of my sleeping bag, unzipping the door and standing in the cold to take a pee. So I've held on to that all night, which is horrendous. Don't ever do that. So note to self, go to the toilet before I jump in my sleeping bag in future and um, everything would have been rosy. Tallulah's had a good night's sleep, snoring a little head off she was. And so I'm just going to get up now, pack the tent down and we're going to head out of here and keep you guys informed along the way. Guys, as we always do on this channel, please, before we leave, just give this video a thumbs up. Also, subscribe if you haven't already. Drop down in the comments box below and keep in touch with me because it's always lovely to hear what you guys have been up to as well. 
a bit of self-promotion now because nobody else is going to do it for me so i have to push these things myself unfortunately if you look down in the comments box there's a pinned comment and in that comment there's three amazon wish lists there's a gold silver and bronze if you check either one of them out there's little gifts in there that you can buy and send directly to me those items will be things that help improve videos on this channel also as well on the channel art you might see a little link there for paypal if you click that you don't need a paypal account yourself but that will send you directly to my paypal account and you can deposit as little or as much as you'd like there each one of these things that you do to help support the channel is very much appreciated. As I always say, guys, at the end of every video, please, please, please look after yourselves. Wherever you are in the world, whatever it is that you're doing, always take care of yourself. But if you're in a position to do so, please look after somebody else as well and take it easy. Until next time, peace!